Hello and welcome to another episode of me painting again. Oh yeah, we're painting again. Except this time we're using a computer. We're using Photoshop. We're using a few brushes and we're gonna have a go at doing a wet on wet style painting using Photoshop. <laughs> it's actually uh, not something new for me because I've uh, done this a few times when I've been designing paintings and um, I thought I would share my process of how I would say I've got an idea in my head of how I want a painting to look but I'm not quite sure. This is the sort of uh, way I do it. There's my brushes. <laughs> you could always pause it and have a look at that. Um, a few of them are stock Photoshop brushes that have been there um, and some of them are slightly different uh, but you could easily make them or um, they are a couple of them are from this pack of brushes of simple brushes are from the dam keeper pack I think they're called um, I got that from uh, schoolism when I did uh, Tonko houses workshops Dice, uh, Tsumi, something like that. <laughs> I'm terrible with names. Um, so anyway, I'm uh, I put in my blue sky, and now I'm working on the mountain. And I'm just thinking about the usual things, the outer shape. Um, and then uh, I just sort of pull pull the paint out. Uh, the more pressure I put on, because these brushes are all pressure sensitive, then the darker they become. Or, and I was thinking about if I do less pressure, it'll be lighter, and then it would go further back. And then I started to think of other ways of making it go further back, because there's plenty of ways to change things on Photoshop. <laughs> So I created my shape, my mountain shape, just like you would if you was painting traditionally. And then uh, I started to think, right, I need to create sort of a mist. So I pulled the uh, mountain down a bit further to think about that. Using a... Um, a clipping mask uh, which I just created I can start putting the snow on the mountain and I don't worry about it going out of the line because it only is going to affect this blue area so that's a good way of uh, creating your highlights using the clipping mask um, I'm still really a beginner on Photoshop <laughs> but I'm uh, enjoying myself and that's all that matters really so I went a bit lighter, started darkish, and then thought I'll go a bit lighter, put a bit more of that on. This is one of the impressionist brushes uh, that I found. Um, on These are ones you can just download when you've got Photoshop. I think it was the Cezanne brush, it worked really well for this. So just like normal, <laughs> not too much pressure because you want the paint to break <laughs> you do it the same way and uh, you can create these nice nice shapes and it almost looks like you, know, you you've painted with a knife almost <laughs> never going to look exact is it because you are at the end of the day not painting <laughs> with paint but like i said this is a really good way of uh designing your painting before and then uh, you don't have to do what I used to do all the time is do your painting and then scrape it off and do it again <laughs> the amount of canvases I used to use it was a bit crazy and uh, expensive let's be honest this way is a bit of a cheaper way of learning how to uh, create the painting before you commit to the paint So I'm just looking at the uh, different angles and things of the mountain. I'm just making this up out of my head. I've got no reference or anything. 
I'm just thinking about the shapes that I want. And I'm just cleaning up some of the edges. And I'm always, uh, because on this you can look at the whole picture, you can you can see the whole thing, so you don't have to w worry about sitting back having a look. <laughs> you can just zoom in and out, which is quite useful. And uh, when you paint using the whole picture like this, you you see a lot more. Where when you're painting in um, this sort of size, which is uh, I set this up as an 18 by 24 canvas. Um, so if you was painting this in real life, you'd have to keep sitting back to check your whole picture out. Like I said, you can zoom out. Yeah, so I keep doing, sitting, <laughs> I keep looking at the whole thing without the need of sitting back having a look. So you, you can uh, get yourself a, uh, an extra cup of coffee and uh, you can pause and drink drink a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. While you look at your painting, you don't have to uh, sit back and have a look. You can just have a drink and have a look. <laughs> so I've got the, um, I think it's just, I can't even remember what that basic brush is. <laughs> but I'm using it to create a uh, soft edge to everything everything is quite hard at the bottom and you don't want that and this, this cut sort of creates a mist if you have it the uh, the brush on sort of a soft setting so it's nice and smooth like that and then it go, you've gone out I've gone over the background hill and then that's send that back and then I just put a little bit over the mountain because you know you would normally tap it to mist it a bit um, I could have used a blur or something but I actually felt that was enough. I might experiment some more with this technique using Photoshop to make it look even more like it's paint. <laughs> so I thought, ah, oh, I should have put some clouds in. So I decided I'd put some in now. And I've actually done this in uh, on a canvas when I've painted this far and thought, ah, oh, I wish I put a cloud in and then just did it. So. <laughs> This isn't anything new for me. Now I'm imagining it's after the snow. Say it snowed the other day and this is a, another day and it's not snowing. And <laughs> that's what I was thinking. And I still use, because I use a pen, I use one of these pens to uh, do the painting. So I still use the similar strokes, still use curved strokes and things. And then I thought I'll just soften the edge at the base of those clouds using the same sky colour. Just let it melt away a little bit as if you've uh, blended it with the brush. So that works quite well. An indication of some clouds. And then I was thinking, oh, we could do is have a line of trees that go all the way across. And I, was, I just picked that colour to see what it was and then went a bit darker. Now, I was wondering an R in which brush to use for this. And I'd ended up choosing this, but I did go into another brush afterwards because... I didn't like the square tops that this creates. Because <laughs> you got to think, you'd be using a fan brush to do this, so you'd have a pointier top to it. And uh, I thought, I'll just mass it in, and then I end up changing it using the other brush. But this just blocks it in, really. It gets the shape. Remember to have the tree line at different heights. You don't you don't want it to be all the same height because it doesn't. It looks like a fence or something. Then <laughs> it's funny because when you're out painting in nature, 
You do get blocks of trees that do look like a block. <laughs> they have a perfectly straight line and you wouldn't paint that because you you'd tell yourself, well, that doesn't look right. But in nature, everything happens in nature. Everything that you think isn't right in a painting because you think, oh, I want to be style. I want a nice style to my painting. Um, you go in nature, nature doesn't care about that. It just, the trees grow and that's it. <laughs> and clouds as well. Some of the clouds I've seen you wouldn't expect. I've seen perfectly square clouds as well. <laughs> I was a bit surprised at that. It was, all, it was absolutely perfect. I was like, if I painted a perfectly square cloud in a painting, no one would believe that's real, would they? <laughs> So yeah, I've gone into a drawing brush it's, uh, and I thought these tops of these trees will look a lot better with, with one of these. And it will give the uh, trees a bit more of a uh, shape and then a few of them I'd put a bit extra detail in. But yeah, I was putting these in pretty quick really. Don't feel like you've got to go this pace when you're doing yours. This video is real time. And, uh, and I was going for it. <laughs> but don't feel you have to go this speed. Take your time. If you're painting this with paint or if you're uh, using the computer, you know, take your time, sit back, have a look, choose your colours, mess around, do, do whatever you like. This just gives you an idea. See, I zoomed out so I could see the whole picture again. Zoom in, zoom out. And I, I actually do change the whole colouring of this painting because I felt like it was a bit too warm for the scene. But you'll see that later, uh, just in case you were painting a along rather than digitally painting along. Um, just know that the colours do change. <laughs> so feel free to go to the end of the video and pause it there and then you could paint that. I'm uh, considering doing a video painting this using the uh, wet and wet approach. See what See what you think. If you want to see me paint this using the wet and wet approach, then uh, put a, put a like and then a comment <laughs> and say yes, I'd like to see this painted. Then I'll uh, I should do a video. And if you want to see more digital paintings, then uh, put a comment below. Say yeah, I like these. Please do some more. I really enjoy painting digitally and I never thought I would, I've got to be honest. I'm just using the curves there um, and then I create a clipping mask because I didn't feel like the trees were dark enough. I felt like they were too um, light compared to the mountain, the darkness of the mountain. So I darkened them. <laughs> Yeah, I do a lot of uh, cartooning using Photoshop. I really enjoy cartooning. I always have, actually. And uh, <laughs> funny thing is, uh, one of my favourite painters, Bob Ross, he used to be into cartooning as well. So I... Using the rubber there, I just rubbed some of it out because it was too much of a block of colour. And then uh, I came back. See how things start to take shape? So I'm, I'm just playing a little bit and I thought, I thought, oh, there's a river there. I can see a river. And so I thought, well, I might as well put one in. I, I can... I can see one there, um, I can imagine it running down there, maybe it's 
a load of water has melted and it's running through. And I thought, yeah, there's a river. So I started building my landscape around the idea of a river. And then I thought, um, I was thinking about where trees would be. Uh, what would be around the river? What could I do to make it, to give the landscape a bit more depth? I mean, it's got a bit of depth. I mean, it's got um, the trees, the snow in front of it, the mountain. Then behind that, there's that other mountain that you can just see. And I was thinking, oh, what else can I do to add depth? And I thought, mm, maybe there's a few bushes here. And maybe I could put a tree in there. I can't remember the name of that brush that I used for the bushes, but it's, like I said, it, that one is definitely in Photoshop. It's just one of the brushes you can use. I think it's one of the Impressionist brushes. So I just picked the colour of the mountain then. <laughs> I'm using the pencil, pencil uh, brush. Just imagining the tree shape. Just pulling, pulling it down. <laughs> These trees are harder to do on the computer. They're much easier to do in uh, using a fan brush. <laughs> I started to put snow on and I thought, that doesn't look right. I wasn't quite thinking snow. <laughs> I'll grab this um, brush to do a little bit of uh, snow, I'll zoom in a bit. Just trying to think about some of the snow settling on, on this. Thinking about how the uh, how it would be affected if I was using a brush. <laughs> That's one of the hardest things to think like that. Because when you do come to paint it, that's what you're gonna be painting. So you are gonna be using fan brushes. So I've got to kind of think. <laughs> I'm just pulling those layers up to bring the uh, bushes in front there. I've uh, got the uh, a brush to put in a uh, bit of a tree trunk. <laughs> I changed the brush. I didn't like the effect. It was too solid. Where this brush has got a bit of a uh, a way that it pulls some of the, the texture. There's kind of a texture on it. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Putting a few sticks and twigs. <laughs> now over here I thought, hmm, maybe there'd be some trees that are quite close, big trees, and I could put them in. Then maybe there's a small tree and it's on a on a bit of a, a tilt. <laughs> so I just thought, oh, what layer am I using? Now I'm just pulling down branches now. So if you had the fan brush, you could just press down a bit harder, and you'd be creating the shapes a lot easier. <laughs> I 
But it is great um, painting on the computer as well because you can uh, do lots of separate layers and you can really refine your colours and things before you, like I said, before you paint it, before you do a painting, you can really play around with your idea first. That's what I like. I know uh, a lot of people use Procreate now. Um, that seems to be quite popular for uh, people with a uh, Mac. I personally haven't got a Mac, I've got a PC, but it looks like a good app. Don't think it's very much money either. So I just blocked in some dark there and then putting in, uh, putting in the shape for this tree. It's funny that I did a wintery scene. <laughs> Because at the moment, well, it should be summery out there, but it's not. It's very, very wet. <laughs> We've had more rain in England in one, well, I think it was in 24 hours. We had two months worth of rain. Crazy. I'm just messing around with the colour that's underneath. I'm imagining I mixed it with the mountain mix. Well, the mixture I used for the mountain and I put probably a bit more blue in so I just used curves to do that <coughs> now I thought I need to mist the um, trees I forgot to do that I'm just finding out what la layer it is that's behind the snow <laughs> So then I can just mist it away. Have a little bit of a, a cold mist down there. And don't forget, you don't want to do it all in one line, one single block. You want it to be at different levels, different heights. And it looks a lot better that way. And then I thought, ah, we might as well reflect the sky into the water. Use a bigger brush, get it done a bit quicker. I wasn't sure whether I was going to have the water come out wide like that or not. Um, again, I was just making it up as I went along. <laughs> and there were certain areas I didn't want the mist to affect the ground because I quite like some of those dark areas. So I just removed some of it using the uh, rubber the, the rubber is also a brush it's a, a brush with a bit of texture on it as well I took that dark there and then I thought that I don't like that <laughs> I just didn't like what was happening there so Like I said, just delete it. If you was painting this, then any problems, you just use the knife and whip it off and then put a, a co another colour on or whatever. You can always change stuff. Even with oil paints, you can change it as you go. So I just got, went for a dark brush and uh, I wanted to create some movement in this water. So I was using rocking strokes with my brush. I could have left it looking icy. It sort of looks icy um, without these lines. You could have left it like that. Maybe I put a bit of transparency in the uh, ice. But I, I wanted the water to be rushing down. Maybe all this water rushes down where those trees are, where that mist is. It comes round there, maybe. And then it comes down here. I've got a bit of a lighter colour. Thinking about the other the light parts. It's easy to go overboard with these. <laughs> As you'll see. I'm always good at... Um, 
really go in for those highlights really enjoying myself and putting too many in I was like, hmm, I think I've overdone it. <laughs> I was, uh, I, I was only an hour in about reflection as well, and with that tree. Um, I could have put one in, but I was thinking about putting bushes on this bit of land in front, so I didn't do it, but I think if I was painting it again, I probably would. And then maybe I could leave this bit of land with only a one or two bushes I don't know <laughs> so now I've really gone for it with the light and uh, on on the water and I've gone a bit overboard there so I gra grab some dark and then I start putting that in the water I've never actually sat out when it's really cold painting water before <laughs> So this was all a bit, bit of a guesswork, and yeah, I should really um, nip out when it's really cold and have a look. <laughs> it's probably all iced over. I think about when I've walked around um, the lake near me, and I used to take my dog out all the time. Um, in, the, in the winter it was just a block of ice so I'm just blocking this in dark bluey colour getting some of the um, <clears throat> getting some of the light colour so we can create some bushes Now, before that, we needed to highlight the tree. <laughs> and I have to admit, at this point, I started to forget where the light's coming from. And that's one of the things you should really think about all the time. Where's the light coming from? I'm just putting in some indications of where maybe snow is. I started to think, oh, well, it would be pretty good if you could see the brown of the trunk. And uh, I put that in. Imagine I mixed it with like burnt umber and dark sienna. And then, uh, then I thought, man, it looks a bit too brown. <laughs> but I carried on, I put some burnt sienna in there. <laughs> a bit lighter. and But it, yeah, it's just too, it's too brown, isn't it? And I thought it needs some, get some blue onto it, and then that'll darken it a bit, take it back a bit, and then put some of the uh, branches on top of that. So it does, it adds a little bit of colour, rather than just these blues and greys. I do quite like it. Add in a bit more snow, a bit more of the snow here and there. And then uh, got this brush, perfect for bushes, isn't it? <laughs> I couldn't believe it when I, because I was thinking, oh, I'm gonna have to make a brush, and I, I haven't made Photoshop brushes. I don't really know that much about making brushes, but then I found this brush, and I was like, that actually looks all right. <laughs> it's not exactly how it would look, but it's not bad. And then 
in those dark areas just put in some sticks and twigs you gotta leave the dark areas to create the layers and then I put a few sticks and twigs over there ready get that uh, the bush back <laughs> get the size Create the shapes. I think I'd be able to use this same brush to do uh, some cool looking trees and things, which I plan on doing. Do some like waterfalls and things using uh, Photoshop. Other ideas for future paintings. <laughs> I'll put a little bit of that in the water, just pulling down something I forgot uh, to do earlier. Just adds a bit more, you know, like you would have done if you was painting it. You would have put the dark in and then pulled it down into the water, so I thought I'd do that. I was, I was just checking to see what things would look like with a different shade. So I felt things were too warm, so I took a bit of the red out. <laughs> Still got that um, dark colour going on there. <laughs> so I thought, oh, well, I'll put some of that in, so it might improve the effect of the bushes. It actually does. More than white. Do that bush there. And I, I was thinking to myself, hmm, what else can I do? I thought, oh, that tree. That can be brought down. I think I can bring that closer. So you just like you would do. <laughs> I've done that same thing using uh, paint as well. And I went a bit darker just to really show that this is further forward. There's a lot of uh, a lot of power there. <laughs> Pulling that tree out and planting it there. few areas where the snow is and I thought hmm put a little bush at the base why not <laughs> it's good fun doing them bushes they're so easy <laughs> and you can put them in pretty fast. So I thought, hmm, maybe there's a bit more light on the mountain. So I will put a bit more light. in that part of the mountain mm. 
It makes it look a little bit better, I think. A bit more light hitting there. And then uh, I was looking around thinking, oh, maybe, maybe there'd be more light on some of them trees. And I wanted a couple of birds in the sky. My, my mind was uh, going all over the picture. <laughs> I was thinking about, I'm thinking about the whole look of it and uh, I wanted to change the feel of it so it's a bit more colder so it looks a bit cooler but it's got a bit of a reddish hint in there almost like it's got a bit of a lizard and crimson in with the blue now <laughs> But I do quite like that colour. Like I said, it's your choice. You do whatever you like. This is just an idea. <laughs> I thought I'd have a go at signing it to see what that looks like. <laughs> so you can even choose where you want to put your signature and mess around with that as well. So there you go, there's the uh, finished painting. Um, hope you enjoyed this one and uh, it's fun to have a go at um, doing this sort of thing and I'll see you at another one. Cheers, bye!